Yabba-dabba-doozer. We are back with another episode of last week, this week, with your boy Clayton Hill. Feeling extra goofy, I guess. Extra goofy because it has been a minute. We've been skipping around, man. I don't know. Things happen. Life happens. We get thrown off track. We, tr- you know, whatever, whatever, man. Uh, we. It is brotherly love is the theme of the day. Brotherly love. My uh, younger brother came out earlier this year. Pretty sure I already put that out. I don't know. Lakers game. Whole bunch of stuff went down. And then my other brother came in town a couple weeks ago. And that's where we're at. I got two younger brothers. Shout out to my bros. I love y'all, man. Nothing but love here. And so my youngest brother came out. And we had a time, man. We just had a jolly good time. He gets in town. We check out like where I work. Head down to Barney's Beanery. Just, you know, because that's what we did last time. So, hey, check out the place. See how things have not changed at all. But it's a good vibe. We do that. We grab us a a, a nice submarine sandwich. I go with a steak and cheese. Load me up on everything. Give me all the pickles, the tomatoes, the onions. Load it up. We get back home and we we fix this and it's got to be toasted because we were at Barney's for a while. We got them before Barney's. And uh, my brother's putting them in the toaster oven. And a long, mm, ah, you know, preparation's great. I should, I should, cannoli, cannolis. We got some cannolis with our subs. He didn't know what they were. So he throws them in the toaster oven with the sandwiches. (laughs) <laughs> which is all good man so we had some subs we went to barney's we just watched you know we chilled and watched some netflix man watched some stand up had a good time just easing into the weekend then i introduced him to the cafe de Oya situation going on out here in burbank california it's like the cinnamon coffee It's Mexican-style coffee, and I guess they brew it with cinnamon. I don't know, but fantastic. Got to get some of that. I got to figure out how to get that in my house because that stuff is addicting. He's not even a coffee guy. Loved it. Cafe de Oya. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. O-L-L-A. I'm pretty sure you get two L's together in Spanish. It's oh, yeah, but I really don't know how to say it. Some cafe day. Oh, yeah, I'm pumped about it. Really need to get some here. Uh, Then headed out to the California country. Went to the sourdough festival. Festival is a strong word for not a lot of sourdough available. The sourdough funnel cake was bomb, which I mean, I don't know. I thought that was like, I don't know what I don't know what bread versus batter really is. But I thought that, you know, basically deep fried batter. I imagine like pancake batter. I don't know how that could be sourdough, but that was fire. Uh lavender donuts because they're also a home of a lavender festival which has been the best festival so far been there quite a few times for many different things it is the lavender festival that you want to go to at one two three farms that's their name i didn't make it up one two three farms really cool place for the lavender festival so we had the sourdough funnel cake the lavender donuts. We had lavender ice cream. And then a sourdough bread bowl, which was bomb. That was the by far the most sourdough-ish dish that was available. And it was fire. I will give them that. But not, not a lot going on. But we like the place. It's out in the country. 
got to see the mountains, got to see wildflowers, you know, taking pictures during golden hour, which I called the glow hour for a long time. It's the same thing, right? Glow hour, golden hour. When it's golden hour, you are glowing. So I'm not that far off. Give me a little credit there. Next morning, more cafe day. Oh, yeah. Give it to me. We went to a different spot, though. And had some of that. Woo, man. Dude, Mexican breakfast. (laughs) I don't know what it is. They just. They just dominate all kinds of just the food industry in general. Man, tough to mess it up. And they do it really well. So more of that. Cafe de oh yeah. <laughs> Feeling extra goofy today. After that, we get a game plan together. This is a big day. Big day, ladies and gentlemen. Because we're we're going, we're gonna treat ourselves. It's time for the wonderful world of Walt Disney. Disneyland. I've been out here for five years. Never gone. But me and my brother were raised on like Star Wars. And we know that they got that going on down there. So we had to hit that up for sure. We didn't care if we did anything else. Anything else at all. We just wanted some Star Wars in our life. And it just... We... mm, Just what a lovely day. An absolute crazy experience. I think I went there when I was younger, but I hadn't had a chance to go as an adult and really appreciate what's going on. The detail that they put into everything, this is a this is a hundred percent immersive experience. I've been to the Six Flags out here and fun. Wonder Woman. One of the best roller coasters I've ever been on. Trash Park, Wonder Woman, fantastic. Disney, all around, five stars out of five. I feel like that's important to clarify. Just every detail was spot on. In every different area you went, it was like a different theme, different different stuff going on. Like the characters were different, the people were different, like the aesthetics were different, but you just felt like you were in whatever world that you were around, that's the world you were in. When we went to Star Wars, it was like all these big rocky features and like everything was like super, you know, robotic almost and yeah, from all the droid stuff, you know? We love the droids. And even though like the Coke stand wasn't just like, didn't say Coca-Cola. It was like the writing that that was close to what would look like in Star Wars, which is like a little messed up, a little like digital almost looking and had like a droid there on the end as well. You know, these big like crazy fake mountain stuff. We saw the Millennium Falcon. Oh, my favorite, dude. One of my favorite ships. I remember as a kid, I had one of those ships and you pop the back off and you could see you had like little, you know, figurines that you could put in there and you could play around. And even like that little uh, I think there was like a little chess table or something like that in the little bench area, you know, and it had like so you could you it was like the inside of the back end of it. Right. And then you could pop off the shell to the, like the gunner section. And it had all these different buttons on the back that would, you know, warp speed. Heck yeah, dude. You know, Chewbacca's in there. Harrison Ford's in there. Sick. Had some Stormtrooper guns as a kid. Had like those uh, crazy like desert, like Walker big machine things. You know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm doing it on the video but you can't see like with my hand it's just like these i don't know they're like the big big like square foot robot it's like real top heavy just one capsule and then you got two big legs and they just i need to work on my star wars sound effects you know but like we we had i had bubba fett's like yeah the the spaceship that was like vertical 
Choo 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 choo. Guns. Yeah, and that was really cool, you know. So like we grew up on Star Wars and like the the old school Star Wars, and that was that was pretty awesome, pretty cool stuff. So you're like in this immersive world, and the first thing I see are like these stormtroopers out and about, and I'm like, oh, we're getting excited. My brother's getting excited, and we end up having like this person. That's there. There's these Disney folk people that work there, employees, photographers, and they'll take your pictures in different like big areas throughout the park. And you know, it's like 15 bucks for one picture. You can do like 25 for like the whole day. So we end up like getting our pictures taken by like these professional photographers, and they turn out absolutely fantastic. Love that we get to, you know, have decent pictures rather than me trying to figure out what the hell to do. Cause those hardly ever work out. We saw the millennium Falcon, which is like my favorite. And I'm just like, Oh, you know, there's like that. that it's like an X wing, but it's a, it, well, no, we saw X wings for sure. But like the tie fighter and it wasn't, a, but it wasn't really a tie. I don't know what was going on with it. Wasn't a tie fighter, but all these ships and stuff are around. that you get to kind of go up and kind of see? It was really cool. One of the photos that we took was like uh BB eight coming up, you know, which is like, the, I'm an R2-D2, C-3PO kind of guy. The OG style. But I'll take BB-8. But man, it'd have been cool if it was R2-D2. Basically, the, the professional photographers take photos of you. And then they'll like insert this graphic. You know, they just Photoshop BB-8 in there. So we're giving a thumbs up. And then BB-8 comes with like a little lighter. And he's got a little thumbs up. We did a picture where we're like the hand was like, you know, we were like using the force. That was really cool. A little back to back, like smoldering eye photo. That was awesome. So we have like pictures, good pictures to remember the day by. The rides were sweet. I mean, you got to love Star Wars. It's not again. It's not Wonder Woman whip you around and like try to, you know, unlock your spine. That's not what these rides are. It's just like a, a it is a crazy how thrilling it is with how little is going on in the ride, if that makes sense. Like they just do so well with like rocking you around just enough. You're on like this little, I don't know, it's just like a little car, like a roofless car. We're all strapped in and somehow it's like going in all kinds of different directions on the floor, but you've got like a bunch of sound and a bunch of visuals going on. And it's like, if there's an explosion, you know, there's like a fan or something that comes through and like your hair kind of get, you know, you feel the, the, the wind of the explosion with the sound and like the visuals and everything going on. Fantastic on how they do this, like completely immersive experience. It's really Really, really cool. They almost got me to get a year-long pass. Almost. I might still do it. Probably not. It's a scam. It's a trap. You know? Because it's by the time that you, you, you pay for the ticket, then it's gas to get down there. And then it's parking. And then it's food while you're down there. They will get you. So it's not just a season long and I can go whenever I want. Well, yeah, of course you can because you're going to spend another $150 every time you go down there. I'm on to you, Disney. Anyway, I might do it. It's pretty fun. But we did the Star Wars stuff. Um, We got we did uh, the Indiana Jones ride, which was fantastic as well. I don't want to like give away what's going on within these. But they are really cool, and it feel, they make you they make you feel like you are in this. And even like while you're going through the lines, like even for Indiana Jones, because a lot of we were like waiting, like it was raining on a Monday, still wild down there. People don't care; they are there. There's never not going to be a line, so we're waiting like an hour or so for some of these bigger rides. But while you're waiting, it's just like you're seeing like the the stormtrooper guns like, you know, in the line. There's like all these little details and like artifacts and like whatever as you're walking, walking through. So you have things to look at while you are waiting. I get why they do it. So you're not so upset just waiting in like some, you know, bike rack cattle line kind of just going back and forth for an hour. You're like actually going through and seeming like you are in this world. 
and it's really really cool we did yeah so we did andy we did pirates of the caribbean there's like a jungle cruise pirates of the caribbean hey 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 little scary all right let's back off with all the darkness and skeletons because i you know i don't like scary things and i know i'm adult i know i'm adult i know i am an adult okay but like Lots of laughing, like, <laughs> you know, in the dark with skeletons. I would be scared if I was a little younger. I wasn't scared. That's not what I'm saying. Because I wasn't. But a little scary. A little much. We got kids coming through here. Still a fun ride. Prior to the Caribbean, we did Mickey's Runaway Train. Really well done. That was another one that was like same kind of car as a Star Wars rolling around. But like the visuals that they used, it wasn't like cardboard cutouts on the walls and stuff. It was like almost like these projections that made it seem more realistic. Really, really well done there. Space Mountain. We got that one in as well. Uh it's a small world because it's classic and it makes you feel good because we're all humans. As many differences as we have, we have much more similarities. It's a small world after all. And that was cute. I did like that. So yeah, I mean, we got Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean, Mickey's Runaway Train, Space Mountain, It's a Small World, Jungle Cruise. Maybe a couple other extra like smaller ones are in there that I'm I'm not really... I mean, the Star Wars one, there's three rides that are Star Wars. And I recommend doing all of them. The first one you get captured. (gasps) Not cool, man. And you gotta escape with the Rebellion or the Rebels or whatever. You gotta find Luke Skywalker's homies and you gotta get the hell out of there. But it was cool. Like, I mean, you know, you're like being by the force and you're being dragged in and you're like trying, you you know, you're trying to get out of this ship and you're just running into trouble and stuff. And I don't know where these rides are. It's just like, it seems like you go into a wall. You don't see the space, like the footprint of what's going on. But I felt like we were on some kind of Formula One track taking up miles and miles inside this thing. So I don't know where they hide these rides, but it's kind of crazy because I felt like I was moving around left and right. The, they must maximize their space to the max. Maximize the space to the max. A little redundant, you know what I'm saying, though. Kind of crazy how we felt like we just kept moving around. We did all this. I got to give a shout-out because it wouldn't have been possible... Without our badass tour guide. She knows who she is. I don't like calling people out by their names in here. I don't even do it for my own family. All right. But we wouldn't have been able. We got like. I mean we saw all that in like six or seven hours. We definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without her. She knew how to work the system to get it all in. And that was freaking cool man. Disneyland is tight. And that was like half the park. That was half of like Disneyland. There's California Adventure, which is also part of Disneyland. Oh, but guess what? You can't go see uh, both sides for the same price. You got to pay extra to get into the other park, which is where all the Marvel stuff is, which is really cool, too. How convenient, Disney. I see what you did. You took the two best things and you split them up. So people got to pay. You can't just see Star Wars and the Avengers. You have to choose one or pay extra to have extra fun. Dumb. But I get it. I get it. And I digress. It's not about the corrupt corruption of Disney and their, you know, greedy little money hungry little people up top that make me freaking break the bank just to see half a park it's not about that it's about the bros it is about the bros i love my brothers man i absolutely love them um old people don't travel you know like i'm 36 and i don't even want to go anywhere like so it's my brothers that visit me the most which is really cool 
And I really, really enjoy that. I always enjoy the time that we get together. This was probably like the most quality time that I've had with my younger brother. So we're we're in a we are a hodgepodge mix, man. It is it is me and my younger brother is my stepbrother. No blood relation came from my stepdad's side. Already existed. You know, here I am and then just enjoy just joining the family. Right. Bringing those two together. So no blood relation there. And then it's my youngest brother, who's my half brother, my stepdad and my mom's offspring. And so we are all over the place. You know, it's kind of it. it's so cool, though. I love it because we truly are brothers, like regardless of all that, like we grew up in the same home, you know, but between me and my younger brother there's probably like three and a half years, I think. And then my youngest is like eight years or something. It's wild. I don't know. What's 87 to 96? I feel like that's like nine years. Do some math. Somebody math it. December of 87 to like July 96. Somebody math it. I'm not going to do it. But there's been like obviously an age gap. And so we've kind of like grown up, but like that we've really had to make efforts to see each other. And we really have. And it's really, really awesome. You know, they're still young, young and shifty enough to scramble for the, the Southwest seat. I, I can't imagine, you know, like they're maybe a little Southwest scramble, maybe a little yeah, frontier. I don't know what they do, man. I can't do it. I barely like my knees hurt. I don't want to sit on a plane for long. If I sit on a plane too long, my back hurts. That'll be fun coming up here in August going to Franck. I don't know if that's how you say France. I don't know why I said it like that. I was trying to be cool. Duolingo, help me out. Anyway, so they they come to see me the most, um, you know, and it's. I love I love my brothers because they were there. There's finally someone to be rowdy with in my family. You know, finally, I had somebody to play with, somebody to be rowdy with, somebody to break stuff with. We broke picture frames like throwing a ball in the house. We used to throw these like um, they were like, I think they were called splash balls or splash bombs. And they were like these water. They were like sponges, water sponges in the shape of a ball. And you'd soak them up in the pool and you would launch them at each other. And those things hurt, man. Like, I mean, think about if you if you jump off a high dive like and you hit water. Okay. Kind of the same velocity coming at you with like this this water soaked sponge. I mean, you you literally have water going at a certain velocity and you hit it. It's the same thing. And we would stand on the short side of the pool in the backyard and we would rocket these things back and forth at each other, man. And you dodge it and it, it hit the deck and there'd just be this big wet spot where it just compressed that could have been your face that's awesome man you know we broke stuff we ran around i had people that would actually laugh at my jokes because my parents didn't laugh at my jokes <laughs> they still don't man they still don't they still think i'm just you know just a silly little kid and that sucks for them because like that, I feel like that's just me. That's just who, who they got now. I remember just trying to make my, my brothers like shoot milk or water or whatever they were drinking out of their nose. I would try to time, <laughs> time the punchline or whatever I was doing just perfectly right after one of them took a big gulp. And they would always be the ones to laugh at the dinner table. And mom would always say that she just wanted to be proud of me. <laughs> they would always laugh at my jokes. We always ran around. We hung out together. You know, 
They made the house a home, like just filling it with a bunch of kids, just running around doing stupid stuff and and laughing and enjoying each other. I wasn't the only one that was annoying our parents anymore. Finally, I had some helpers, man. It was really cool. We 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 live such different lifestyles. Each one of us is so different than the other. And the age, like, it just kind of plays a part in that. But, like, whatever. We don't care about it. And we don't care about our differences. We don't care about how we live. We just love each other, man. And it's just so wholesome. And I feel like it's just so, you know, it's just like true brotherly love, dude. And we'll always be there. We will always, like, it's crazy. I don't know. It doesn't matter where one of us moves or or what one of us has going on. Like, somehow we always come back to, like, find each other. And, like, we just get stoked for each other, man. And it's, it is really cool. There is just nothing, there's nothing like it. You know, obviously, I love my parents. I love my family. Like, it's not to take anything away from any of the other love that I got going on in my life. But I just have to give a shout out to the bros, man. I truly love y'all. I feel the love. I love when you guys come in town. I love how excited we get. I love how we can do whatever and have a good time, man. And I love how different that we are and how much of a hodgepodge conglomerate style family that we are. And it's just just anchored in that love. And I don't think there's ever been any time that's come between us. We've never had anything where it's just so detrimental to our relations. There's nothing we've ever, not, you know, we've, we've overcome everything. And so I love you guys, man. And this one's dedicated to you all. I hope that... Everybody out there has, whether it be biological or chosen or however, you know, whatever family you have, I hope you have people like that that you can count on. I hope you have people like that that you can lean on, that you can give your love to and and share that love, man, because we're not meant to go through this world alone. Definitely not. Like, uh, we're, just, we're here. It's the relationships, man. It is the relationships that we have in this life that matter. And it's crucial that we pour our time and pour our energy into those, man. So I hope everybody out there has somebody like that. If not, to find yourself like a community that you can get involved in, something that you like to do, maybe similar interests or something like that. And find somebody like that, man. Get a chosen family. You know, if you see a bro today, hug a bro today because bros are for life and today is for the bros. So sweet. So much love. That's going to do it for us on Last Week This Week with your boy Clayton Hill. Follow me on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, Apple Podcast, wherever you watch, wherever you listen. You can find me there, y'all. Brotherly love, everybody. Peace.